Okay, guys. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. Um, return from Heroes Con uh, 2017 in Charlotte, North Carolina. Last night, very late. Um, I'm trying to get all the stuff cataloged and put up that I bought. This is video two. First video is the comic books I got. Uh, went a little bit longer than I wanted, so I want to go a little bit faster in this one. Um, this is part two. The next video will be stories and uh, signed books. Okay, so uh, basically this one is our trades and in, in magazines uh, and things, and and I'm really excited about what I found here. This is one of the reasons I didn't get as many single issue comics as I did because like I went there with a goal and this was awesome. And I'm going to ask you guys to thumbs up the video because this looks like it's going to be in three parts. And as these videos go, you know. Part one gets a lot of views, part two a little bit less, and then three is almost disappearing. I think I got some good stuff. All right, right off the bat, I got this. Um, I think I got this trade for three bucks, or maybe, no, 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 no. I got this trade for five dollars, and then I got some other books with it. But anyway, you're going to see this twice. But this is Melmoth, Melmoth by Dave Sim and Gerhard. Gerhard was actually there. I got a cool story to tell about him, and I had him sign it which was fantastic and in case people don't make it to the third video I have another book signed by him there's a story with that and while I was talking to him he was just fantastic um, <laughs> he uh, asked me if I he, he was talking to me and another person and we were all talking you know Cerebus it was kind of cool his wife was a hoot he was he was just a really cool upbeat guy but he asked if I'd read all 300 issues of Cerebus, and he asked the other guy also. And I told him, I was like, well, over the years, yes, you know, one way or the other. And I said, I'm collecting all 300 issues. I'm really getting pretty close, la, la, la. And then I said, there's a volume called Latter Days, which is practically unreadable. And he was kind of like, yeah, okay. He's like, well, that's good enough. And he whipped out a gold star, which I'll show in the next video, and he signed it and it says, congratulations for reading all 300 issues of Cerebus. So I have a gold star. <laughs> which was just funny. I ended up double dipping. I ended up buying the same trade twice. This would have completed all of my the preacher books that I needed if I hadn't bought the same one twice from two vendors two days apart. Same one twice, yeah, from two two people, you know, from apart. So I need volume four. If anybody out there has a preacher volume four of the original uh, trades there and stuff like that uh, just let me know I don't know maybe we can work something I don't know you know but salvation is fantastic uh, the preacher I uh, also got um, all hills are coming volume 8 uh, got the got these I got a bunch of these trades for really cheap now I have all the single issues of the same man I have a complete set of the, of the of the run and a lot of other things that came out but also, uh, I think I just need uh, The Wake and I also need World's End to have a full set of the trades. And the trades are the ones that I pull down. And it comes to find out that some of the trades I have are first prints from the 90s and stuff before trades were huge. Sandman played a big part in the trade market taking off, okay? So this is the, the kindly ones, okay? This was the, the, this was the big story, the big chapter, if you will, in Sandman that ran for like 12 or 13 issues or something, right? Um, and I bought these on the stands as they came out, you know, at a comic book shop. So now I have a little something I can now pull down and read and... You know, not have to dig through the boxes and stuff, right? So that, that I'm really glad they did that. that. That was a good deal. Got this for five bucks. This is from I don't know what year, the 21st anniversary special of Doctor Who, and this thing is fantastic. It says the key of time, but what it does is that it has some colored pictures in here. Okay, this is from the early 80s, and uh, I think it goes up to 1984. But we go through the years of uh, things that were happening with Doctor Who and they actually give you dates and a synopsis and as you go through the years and the dates on this and look at the nice little pictures that people have drawn that they filled it up with um, you know it talks about news the uh, England's London's reaction characters that popped up uh, they the dates that certain shows showed up and how people did it turns out there was some scandal turns out that when Tom Baker came on there were some people who really had a huge problem with uh, him being the new Doctor Who and I think I'm gonna go back and read it but a lady tried to sue the BBC because you know 
the Tom Baker Doctor Who episodes scared her son or a kid so bad he peed the bed. And they had to bring in a psychologist and everything to get out there. But uh, this thing has some fantastic pictures, colored pictures in the middle of it, of the episodes. And I went ahead and made this my banner, or whatever it is, on Facebook of all five doctors at the time. So just a great thing. And some people on Facebook, when I posted a picture of this, uh, one or two people said they had it also. Then I think they're going to dig theirs out. All right, and then I picked this up for uh, for a, for my girlfriend, um, Rachel Rising Omnibus. Uh, fantastic price on this focus. And um, this thing, <laughs> what is going on with this camera? Uh, and this thing, I bet you, I don't even think it was, uh, what's, I don't know what the original price was, but I think this thing was almost 90% off. I might be exaggerating because I don't really remember how much this thing was. All right. Then I got this. I just put down the ten bucks for this. I didn't try to haggle. I put a bunch of stuff back when I saw this and went back and got this. This is volume one. These things sold out quick. I saw up to ten volumes of this, um, but I had to get it. Volume one, the first seven magazine issues of Vampirella, all in hardback, with a beautiful Frazetta cover. And this thing is just fantastic from 1969 and probably going into 1970, depending on when it came out. Vampirella, you know, the greatest ghoul girl in comics ever. And uh, Trina Robbins actually designed her costume. Uh, but I was so happy to find this. Thank you, Dynamite, for putting this in a fantastic collection. Oh my gosh. Uh, and that was on day one. I was already like bouncing around. Now we get into the books that's made me rethink my entire collection because the nostalgia hit this. I, we, there's been conversations over the years on uh, this channel and other channels. If you go all the way back to the dawn of the community on here, going back seven years, where why do we collect and why are the books special? And uh, one or two people always said there's a nostalgia factor. And I never did not argue that point, but that nostalgia factor very rarely ever really hit me and then it hit you know but this is from an era of comic book collecting that just got me and I was so glad to find these and I got these for a great deal when I got my appendix took out that we you had on the newsstand a three issue uh, mini series of Bill Sinkovich and I think Archie Goodwin or somebody I don't know who adapted it Ralph yeah Ralph, Ma Ralph Macchio but they came together and they did the movie ad adaptation for Dune and this is the Marvel uh, Super Special, which these things are pricey. And I cannot believe I found this for, I think, two bucks. Uh, so, and this thing is in fantastic shape, and I was so happy. So you talk about the nostalgia. I was in the hospital, had my appendix took out, and people went out and got me huge stacks of comic books from the Magic Marts and around. And I ended up with quite a bit of comics, you know, for having my appendix out. For two bucks, Revenge of the Monolith. These are first prints, apparently, right? Uh, and this one at one time was quite pricey, also. And the dude who ran the stand, who had that, the vendor who, who was, was selling this, he saw he he went through the magazines I bought off of him, and then he saw this, and he just gave me the look like, oh, nice. And I was like, yes, nice. You know, and I was wondering if he's going to honor the two bucks. Uh, then I could not believe I found this. This is Hooky. Uh, by some writer that I've never heard of and I don't know if she wrote anything else but this is you know Bernie Wrightston doing some Marvel stuff Monsters and Spider-Man fantastic and these things are in phenomenal shape then I've never gotten to read this and I knew it was out there but this is Charles Vess uh, doing a Marvel graphic novel called Raven Banner which has fantastic art in it just fantastic I hope that is showing up focus yeah like I said in the previous video, it is raining outside. I have every light on the house on and it's late, so maybe I shouldn't be doing this now. But this thing is fantastic. It's a fantasy masterpiece. Marvel Graphic Novel number 15. You know, dragons and Gila. So I think it's a tale from the past of Norse mythology and stuff, right? And then, do I want to do this, right? This was the other nostalgia that hit. I read this as a kid. I had a $5 allowance. I could not afford these, so if my stepdad didn't get them, I didn't pick it up, didn't get to read them. And Epic Illustrated, excuse me, Epic Illustrated. And this was more or less Marvel's answer to uh, Heavy Metal. 
and the people that were on this book it's just fantastic this is where I first read some service stories they've seen did some color stories of service as a kid in here and I think one where he's a tax collector um, but I got 23 issues and these were so hard to find 20 bucks for 23 issues with a number one I'm gonna mess with the camera because I'm so proud that I found these All right yeah I think that's number one right on top right but these were the books as a kid that I would go through and read them I'd read heavy metal magazine that's in uh, uh, you know went through it and you know it was a uh, European art I got to see it um, with Mobius and Bernie Reichstein before I knew who his name was and uh, oh my gosh uh, I've, I've met these guys and talked to them and anyway anyway but uh, I got this and man when I was going through these magazines and stuff the nostalgia hit me with that doom uh, so I got some fantastic issues this is going to be crap oh well yeah just good stuff in here and, like I have a pretty nice collection of these upstairs but like I said now this issue is the one where I had to do it I had to go out and I had to buy it okay this was the first one that I bought with my money and it had, uh, look at this, Bernie Wrightston, Jim Starlin, and it had John Byrne doing the Last Galactic story in it, which did not, Epic Illustrated got canceled before he could do the, you know, complete that story. But these are just fantastic. And these are in great shape and they're complete and they're not beat up. Uh, just fantastic stuff. Oh my gosh. I, and I'm probably going to end up going through these tonight. That's definitely an upgrade. I've got two or three of those. Woo! Getting ahead of myself. So just fantastic stuff. Oh, can't wait to put these in order. Jim Starlin did some of these. Neil Adams, Barry Winsler Smith. Uh, just all kinds of it's all kinds of stuff and this was like adult stuff but it was not as abrasive and uh, psychedelic I guess is the word as uh, heavy metal at the time and as we all know heavy metal has a very very you know big part in my heart but it's the epic illustrated but those magazines the dune magazine those graphic novels these epic illustrated it felt like 1982 and 1983 to me when i was a kid you know some of these books came out like in 85 don't get me wrong you know but the epic illustrated having those in my hand and seeing them i could smell the air of that year and i could i remember i could feel the sun on my back from it and it felt like 1982 there was an atmosphere when i was going through those so the nostalgia hit i guess anybody's experienced nostalgia knows what I'm talking about. All right, one more video to go. I don't know if I have it in me. I might shoot it tonight, might shoot it tomorrow. The camera's pissing me off and the lighting's pissing me off. Uh, it might have something to do with my battery dying on the computer also. All right, next video will be signatures and stories of, um, of a Heroes Con. So like I said, give it a thumbs up. Later.